Hi, I'm Jason Mears, and this is NVIDIA Grid on VMware Part 1. What is NVIDIA Grid? So, it's not uncommon for people to take physical hardware, uh, connect it to a hypervisor, and then that hypervisor turns that physical hardware into virtual hardware and that virtual hardware can then be passed on to one or more virtual machines. Virtualization has been pretty much the standard over the last 20 years on how to run enterprise IT and corporate IT. Um, and for the most part, it works pretty well. It's pretty good for passing through CPU. It's very good at passing through disk and memory. But one of the places where it has struggled in the past, especially with end user computing and VDI type solutions, are graphics. And people either find that the graphics are kind of average quality and sometimes very poor quality. So graphics has always been the weak part of um, the hypervisor and end user computing just because there's so much demand up for graphics performance and not very many slots in a server to put graphics cards in. So NVIDIA came up with a solution for that called N NVIDIA Grid and NVIDIA Grid cards. So that's basically um, a way of dealing with multiple users. So up here we've got maybe eight users using uh, a graphically intensive application who ideally would like a, their own graphics card or their own dedicated graphics card of their own. Now that's not feasible to stick that many graphics cards in a server at once. You might have you know, potentially 30, 40, 50, 60 users on a box, maybe up to 100 users on a box, and there just isn't enough room in a server to stick that many graphics cards. So NVIDIA came up with something called the NVIDIA Grid card, and this is a large, powerful graphics card designed to go into a server, and it comprises of two parts. There's the, there's the physical card itself, the grid card, and then there's the grid software. And basically the card is put in the server, and the software is installed in the server, and the card gives all its resources to the grid software, and the grid software then talks to the hypervisor and tells it that it's got a grid card available that can be carved up um, into little pieces and distributed around all the users. So we'll talk more about how it how it carves this up in one of the next slides. But essentially, grid card and grid software talk to the hypervisor and allow you to give a slice of a hardware card to every single user uh, who needs to use it or, or has a desktop application on the hypervisor. So a good way of explaining that is, if you imagine it's your birthday, and for your birthday, you have a big birthday cake. If only two people come to your birthday party, you can have half the cake each, because there's only one cake to share through two people. However, if four people come to your birthday party, you're gonna have to cut that into quarters, because there's now there's four people need to share that birthday cake. And if it's eight, you're now into eighths. And if it's 16, you're now into sixteenths. So the point here is that the more people want to share of that cake, the smaller the slice gets. Now in our example, the birthday cake is the big grid card. The thing that carves it up is the grid software. And all the slices are distributed out to all the users who want a piece. So in, for the rest of this video, think of the concept of a birthday cake carved between users so that the more users you've got, the smaller the slices are, or the less users you've got, the bigger the slices are. But the, the card is the cake, the grid software is the thing that cuts it up, and then the slices are what we issue to each user. This is the way that NVIDIA would describe it. This is from the official documentation where we have um, an NVIDIA grid manager in the hypervisor connected to a grid card and then we have the guest VMs with the virtual GPUs or virtual graphics processing units. If I correlate that back to the picture before, this is the bit where the card goes into the hypervisor and this is the end users with the slices of that video card. Now if any of that looks a little bit complicated or some of the terms here are unfamiliar, I do have some other videos which are called graphics cards, GPU basics, and in that video we talk about how we do graphics in a virtual machine, starting with the very basics step by step. I also have another video, GPU Acceleration, which talks about the difference between a software-defined graphics card, a dedicated graphics card, and a shared graphics card. That gives you a little bit more detail about the three different types that we can use in a hypervisor. Um, in that video, it talks a little bit about shared GPU, dedicated GPU, and software GPU, and in fact, combining them all into the same system, and how we actually go about allocating those to each user. Slide looks a little bit complex, but we build it up slowly just to explain the concept in simple steps. 
And then if you're still thirsty for more, there's a GPU comparison showing the difference in performance between a software card and a dedicated card. And in that video, I split screen four different types of graphics cards, so a software graphics card and three different types of physical graphics card and compare the performance across all of them. Now in these videos, the grid card that I've chosen is an NVIDIA Grid K2. Uh, it's the K2 version of the grid card. I'm using this one because it's the it's the newest version of the grid card, although it's quite old now, it's the newest version that doesn't require any additional software licensing. So because I'm using this in a home lab on an older server, I'm, I want the most powerful card I can get without having to buy enterprise licenses to put this in. So the NVIDIA Grid K2 is the most powerful card available without additional NVIDIA licenses for the purposes of running a demo, um, but it's only supported on vSphere 6.5. So I've got a, a separate server running 6.5 although the rest of my lab is running vSphere 7. And if we have a look at that card, it's one card, but it's got two brains or GPUs. So the big silver things you can see there are the GPUs uh, or the brains. And in our example, each one of those provides resources just like the cake. So in our example, we've got a birthday party with two cakes and we're gonna divide these two cakes up between all of the users. So when we look at this again, you'll notice that the edge of the card doesn't actually have any connectors. And that's because this is designed to be used with virtual desktops, not plugged into a physical monitor hanging out the back of the server. So no connections on the end of the card. The two brains or GPUs, graphics processing units or lumps of resource or birthday cakes, whichever way you prefer to think of this and then two power connectors on the back. Now it is worth mentioning that these are particularly hungry cards and you do need to connect um, a reasonable amount of power to these and a reasonable amount of airflow. So it is something we'll cover later on, but these cards need good airflow and good power. You may find that you need a slightly bigger power supply in your server to run these. Uh, please check the documentation that comes with the card. I'm, I'm gonna allude to that in the, in the next video. And for all these grid cards, Nvidia have tables that say for this many people you can have slices this big or if you want this many slices you can only serve this many people. In our case we're going to use the K2 grid and we're going to use a slice that's this one. That when, uh, when Nvidia talk about slices of cake or slices of compute they talk to them as if they are profiles and when you see there K240Q that's the name of the profile that the grid software is going to use on the grid card. If I drill into that a little bit more, what we're basically saying is all this information here relates to the size of the slice. And what we're saying is this slice is useful for a power user or a designer. They will get 1024 meg of RAM or a gig of RAM. And that will be good enough for them to run two monitors at a maximum resolution of 2560 times 1600. So that's the size of the slice that we're going to give each user. Each cake or each GPU can deliver four of those slices. And because there's two GPUs or two cakes on each card, those uh, GPUs can deliver four slices each. That means we'll have eight slices in total. So this card can deliver eight of those profiles to users on virtual machines. So this is the size of the slice and therefore the number of users or people we can serve on it. If I was to use bigger slices, if only two people came to my party, they could have a cake each. So on the two GPUs, the largest slice possible, one per GPU or one per cake. So a maximum of two users on that card or two users at that party. Uh, one in between is um, a profile slightly smaller where you can have two users per GPU and with two GPUs that's four people uh, using graphics on the system and then we move down to the slightly smaller ones which allow you to do um, less and less resolution but we've got more users on a card so you can see here that this K2 card can handle anywhere between 16 users and two users depending on the size of the profile or the size of the slice that you give to each user. So that was the introduction. I'll just explain what we're going to do in the other videos because this is where we actually do the work. In videos one and two, we're going to, uh, sorry, part one and two, we're going to talk about um, getting the drivers and installing the software. 
and we're going to talk about editing the um, the server, the, the vSphere server itself, and creating um, a virtual machine that uses those resources. And then in the subsequent videos, we're going to do things like uh, an operating system install on some benchmarks, and we're going to run some graphics software to test the performance of these virtual machines running on this grid K2 card. So that was NVIDIA Grid on VMware Part 1. What is NVIDIA Grid? So thank you for your time, and I hope you found that useful.